whereas many bars and restaurant owners are still looking at whether the weekend sales are sustainable. Sean was at a pub yesterday, and today, delighted to say, he's actually back in the studio for the first time in months. Good morning. Wow. Welcome. <laughs> you kept it well. <laughs> well done. Yeah, it's nice to be back. Uh, yeah, pub yesterday in the rain, in the warm today, uh, talking about developments of pubs. Uh, again, at least three pubs that we know of in Somerset, West Yorkshire and Hampshire have closed because a customer at each got in touch to say they've tested positive. But guidance says not necessarily to close the business or the workplace uh, or send staff home unless you're advised to do to, so by NHS test and trace. So loads for people in the hospital, hospitality industry to be thinking about. We've got Jonathan Downey who joins me now. He runs a number of bars in London. We've got a campaigning group for the industry as well. Uh, morning to you, Jonathan. Um, Jonathan, what do you make of this? If a customer got in touch with you about the um, about a test being positive for coronavirus, would you end up closing your bars on the back of that? I think maybe for 24 hours and give a super deep clean and you know make sure everything's properly sanitised and perhaps test the staff, do whatever we can, whatever the guidance suggests, whatever the advice is, to make sure that we can reopen again as quickly as possible. I mean, we're, we're uh, expected to take contact details. We can let our customers know from the, the day, in, 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 you know, the relevant day, and try and sort this out. But I mean, it's only three pubs, and I think over eighteen thousand opened uh, on the weekend, and so it's a very small amount. I mean, the virus is out there; it's you know, we, it's not gone yet, so it's bound to happen at some stage. And it's just really how the industry and how individual operators respond when this happens. And it sounds to me as though they're dealing with it in the best way they possibly can. So that's good. <laughs> It is a very small number. I guess it's an example of what people like yourself are having to deal with at the minute. The weekend sales, that you saw how many people were hitting the pubs and bars. You may have things like this to deal with as you go along. How are you feeling about it all right now? Well, I think Super Saturday, unfortunately, was quite underwhelming for the industry. It was pretty much as we expected. Around about half of hospitality venues, pubs, restaurants, cafes, bars opened uh, on the weekend. And sales levels were around about half what they should normally be at. So there wasn't this big mad rush to the pub that everyone was expecting. There were one or two uh, busy parts of the UK. But generally, a lot of that was people just gathering where other people gathering. They were buying takeaways from supermarkets and, and corner shops. And it wasn't really the venues themselves that were creating these gatherings. So it was a bit underwhelming. And it's a long road back for our industry. You know, we employ over 3 million people. And uh, it's really... Uh, there's a huge concern at the moment about how many of those jobs are going to be left at the end of the year. There's a lot to do. We need to try and uh, get customers confident to come and visit our venues because they are safe spaces. We are experts in food safety and customer safety. We've got these new cleaning protocols. And so, you know, if we can continue that way, I'm sure people will come back. So, Jonathan, I mean, th this idea that you may, that your pubs may have to be closing briefly. Look, one of these pubs, for example, says it's just closing for a couple of days, expects to be reopened on Saturday. Could, does that affect how you think about running your business, if that might be on the cards? Yes, it does. And I think in many cases, some operators, where they're on more than one site, won't be opening venues that aren't profitable enough at the moment. So if, if there's a risk of a second outbreak or there's a risk of a second spike or there's a risk of another lockdown or whatever it is, I think a lot of business owners will decide not, never again to reopen certain venues because the business risk just isn't worth it. Jonathan, uh, thank you uh, for being with us this morning. Jonathan Downey there, who uh, runs a, a few bars in London and just reflecting, really, the, the different things that a lot of hospitality bosses are having to take into account. Speaking to the boss of Whitbread, that's Premier Inn, Beef Eater Brewers there, in an hour's time to see what they're up to. Sure, thank you very much. Interesting that Super Saturday wasn't so super as they had been expecting. No, yeah, but um, yeah, maybe steps at this yeah. stage. So, yeah, yeah. And things are changing all the time. We're trying to keep you... Um, Across all of those on BBC Breakfast. This is an interesting one for you this morning. Six couples will start a High Court challenge today to demand legal recognition for humanist weddings in England and Wales. In a moment, we'll speak to a couple who've delayed.